And now Mr. Jerry Stoltenberg is going to present a live demonstration of the Crew Access Arms subsystem. Hello, my name is Jerry Stoltenberg. I am a member of the Kennedy Ground Control System. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the capabilities of the software associated with the Crew Access Arm, which we call CAA. And the Crew Access Arm provides normal, control, normal access for astronauts and crew to the vehicle, as well as provides emergency egress capabilities if the astronauts were to have to do, perform an emergency evacuation while, the vehicle, while they were in the vehicle and it was fueled at the pad. Currently, the crew access arm is a critical system due to this requirement, and it has both redundant hardware as well as redundant control systems. And if we take a quick look at our screen, you'll notice that on our screen here we have PLCA, which is the programmable logic controller on the A stream, and we also have information for PLC B and like I was mentioning earlier the crew access arm is a redundant system so it has an electric drive system as well as a pneumatic drive system. The electric drive system consists of a single electric motor and two different variable frequency drives which we call VFDs which provide the speed control for normal operations and high speed uh, motion for emergency operations. On system A only controls the electric drive portion. System B controls both the electric drive system and the pneumatics drive system. And for that reason, PLCB is going to be the simulated subsystem that we're going to be monitoring today. So as I operate the system, please be aware that you'll, you will notice that PLCA information on the screen remains static and only PLCB items change because our simulation is only enabled on PLCB. Since the normal crew access arm speed for normal operations is 0.28 feet per second and the arm has to travel over 33 feet for its normal range of motion, I'm going to go ahead and initiate motion now and as the crew access arm is in motion, I will cover some of the capabilities of our software as well as, as, well as some information that is displayed on our screens. This here is our main operation screen that you'll see and it provides all the information and control for the crew access arm. So if you'll notice, there's PLC A and B information. On the upper left-hand corner is the system ready status. And as you currently see, I'm ready for an electric extend as well as a pneumatic extend. Um, another screen that we have associated with this particular piece of hardware, we call the arm view screen. And the arm view per screen provides us detailed information about our current velocity as well as information about our current position. As you will notice, you'll notice that we have multiple indications for the arm's position. Again, because this is a critical system, we also have multiple end items that are monitoring the system. And during emergency operations, we can actually monitor those items, determine if we have a failure, and operate in a reduced status on, even with a failed sensor. I'm going to go ahead and go back to what we call our main display, and I will go ahead and initiate a normal ex electric extend. Down in the lower right hand or left hand corner of the screen rather, you'll notice I have options for electric extend, electric retract. I'm going to go ahead and select electric extend. And when I do, um, because we don't want to inadvertently cause motion, I have to confirm all my commands. So I have to arm and send my command. As soon as I arm and send my command, if you focus your attention on the center of the screen, you'll notice that PLCB is indicating motion. Uh, we're at 2.6 feet per, approximately three feet. Um, you also notice that my arm is gaining in speed and acceleration. And if you look down here, oh, this thing is. If you look down the the VFD information, you notice that my encoder is counting. I have voltage and current information, and my drive is being powered. And you'll also notice that you have some other information on the screen as far as the drive clutch brake mechanism, uh, the truss latch information, and GN2 supply information. And currently our arm is about, right about 14 feet right now in position. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and initiate a stop. And because this system has PLC A and PLC B, one of the things that, one of the options, things that we are going to demonstrate here is we have uh, 
spacecraft control language applications in our application software framework. And when I initiate a stop, I actually have to send a command to both PLCs because they are independent, but yet we're providing one common point of control for two independent control systems. So when I select stop and I hit send, notice that my arm stops at 24.9 feet. And if you'll notice, my actual uh, velocity information now goes to zero. So my arm did move and deaccelerate to zero feet per second. Uh, the next thing that we're going to demonstrate is the ability to actually control this system from the pneumatics system. And if we take a look at the screen currently, the pneumatic drive information is in the upper right hand corner of the screen and it tells us our current supply pressure to the system is 120 pounds per square inch. Our current forward and reverse pressure to our motor because it's off is atmospheric pressure which is indicating 14.6 or so pounds per square inch. And if you also notice, we have the drive clutch brake me mechanism. Now the function of the drive clutch brake mechanism is that it provides the ability to disconnect the electric drive and engage the pneumatic drive if we're on the pneumatic drive and vice versa if we're on the electric drive. And of course that is because in the event we have a damaged pneumatic motor, we want to be able to decouple it automatically from the drive system in case it is damaged and couple it only to the active system. Um, the drive brake mechanism is responsible for holding the arm in position when we're not in the fully extended or the fully retracted positions. Uh, this particular system mechanically consists of a drum cable mechanism similar to an elevator system, but of course the crew access arm is horizontally mounted. So you could kind of picture it as a uh, horizontal truss elevator type system as far as the me mechanical drive system. When the truss is in the fully extended or fully uh, retracted position, it does have a latch or a latch pin, and there's a pocket and a locking pin that will position and insert, and that is to ensure that the crew access arm remains in the um, extended or retract position during high winds uh, to make sure there's no inadvertent arm motion during you know normal uh, arm positions. So I'm going to go ahead and select Elect pneumatic extend, arm my, arm my command, and send my command. And if you notice and take a look at our screen, we do notice that the drive and clutch mechanism switches from pneumatic or switches from electric to pneumatic. Our brake released, and now we're continuing motion on our pneumatic drive only in the extend direction. Our, my current position is about 30 feet. And of course, if you look at the information for the pneumatic motor, you can see that we do have forward pressure matching supply pressure. Once my arm reaches its near fully extended position, it will hit a set of slowdown switches, which prompt the system to respond by reducing the pneumatic drive motor, which deaccelerates the arm and brings it to a slow stop. Once the arm is detected at the fully extend position by the limit switches, we de-energize the sub Nitrogen, or nitrogen supply valve to the motor and the motor pressure will drop off and we will stop at our current position which is 33.3 feet. Um, another thing that we're going to demonstrate is again today we are on a uh, in a simulated environment which is one of the features that the launch control system provides. Uh, running on a simulation environment provides us two very important uh, key capabilities. Uh, one thing it provides is to provide uh, uh, staff training, as well as it provides us the ability to test our software. One of the things that we do first after we write our software is to actually test it and verify it in a simulated environment to ensure it responds as expected so we don't actually physically damage any ground equipment or possibly flight hardware. And another important thing behind that capability with the SIM interface, which I will show you now, is there is a simulation interface to this application and when I select it it's up here on the screen and I have the ability to insert certain faults into my system and those faults again allow us to do a couple different things they allow us to test our software for all possible fault variations to make sure our software responds as expected and we can also use it to insert faults during training to make sure operators that are manning the launch control room during a launch day can adequately and quickly notice a particular fault condition as well as uh, quickly respond to it 
to prevent a delay in the launch. Uh, what am I going to do now is I'm going to override one of our limit switches. And the limit switch I'm going to override is the truss latch control valve limit switch. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to override this particular switch to a one. So I'm going to enter one in my simulation interface. I'm going to select override. So what I've just done is I've sent a command to our simulation server and I've told it to base to simulate that this sensor always reports in the on condition regardless of what type of uh, process our PLC is telling it to perform. So I've just simu basically simulated a shorted uh, limit switch in the field. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and select electric retract. Again, I have to arm and send my command. And when I select arm and send, the first thing that the operator would be looking for is he would be looking for that I have motion on my arm. I would, be, I would look for my position to start uh, retracting, moving from 33.3 feet and uh, smaller or, or lower, and I would expect to see some type of negative velocity to indicate that my arm is actually moving in the retract direction. However, I don't see any information, but if, if you notice at the top of my screen, I have a prompt uh, light flashing, which indicates that my system is reporting something has happened. If I select this prompt, the system will display what type of alarm or air condition that I have. And if I look at my prompt, it says, it is indicating that the truss unlatch sequence has had a failure on PLC B1 at step latch control valve off, and it's reporting that that control valve did not turn off in the expected amount of time. And of course, that's because we inserted a failure with our simulation interface. I can choose to respond to this particular app error, so I have to select my error and, and select respond. And when I select respond, it's going to give me currently three different options. I can select continue, I can select two to retry, or I can terminate my sequence. Um, the difference between continue and retry is if I retry, this system is going to provide a handshake to the PLC to tell, to tell it to wait for that particular limit switch to report off. So you can actually try to see if a particular piece of hardware responded, but possibly it's responding too slow. Then if I select one continue, I'm going to send an issue, I'm going to issue a command from here to the PLC to tell it to ignore that particular fa failure and continue to the next step. In this case, the next step is going to be to check to see if the actual latch pin physically became unlatched. And since I only simulated a failure of the electric switch that indicates the position of the valve and I did not insert a failure of the physical valve itself, the valve actually did cycle open. The latch pin actually did drop out in the simulator. So when I select continue and tell it to bypass the limit switch uh, error, we expect the system to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and select continue and select OK. And if you notice, my arm continues motion. I'm now re retracting. I'm currently at 31.8 feet. And my actual velocity is right around minus 0.2 to minus 0.3 and our target of minus 0.28 feet. And our arm will continue operation in the retract position. Um, and that completes the demo demonstration of the crew access arm.